All right, so in this part of the Arduino Lithium Ion BMS project, we are going to be calibrating this thing so that it measures the cell voltages accurately. And we're also going to get this current measurement as close to zero as possible when there's nothing uh, flowing through it. But first off, in order to do this, you will need a computer, a multimeter, calculator of some kind, and of course the BMS project itself here. Now again, I do want to mention that this is a slightly modified Arduino Nano. If you look at the bottom of one of the boards that I'm using for this, I have this diode removed, which is the diode that keeps you from pushing power back to the uh, computer's USB. Now, I just removed that so that the USB port cannot provide power into the Arduino and instead the Arduino has to pull its power off of the onboard 5 volt regulator over here. So first off we're going to take our meter, we're going to put it in DC volts and you're going to want to have a meter that you can trust and get a pretty good accurate reading off of. But uh, anyhow, I'm going to put the probes across the first cell like so and you can see our cell number one voltage is 4.13 and if I look over here in the code, I have this area that says cell 1 cal, cell 2 cal, and cell 3 cal. And it's 50 plus 0 the way that it's sitting right now. And it says allows for voltage calibration of the first cell, but I've never really explained how you get that voltage calibration. And that's what this video is going to be about. So, <clears throat> so first thing we're going to do is open up calculator. You can use whatever your preferred choice of calculator is for this, but what we want to do is take this voltage, which is the real voltage that we're measuring off the cell, so 4.13 in this case, and we're going to subtract this voltage that the uh, Arduino BMS setup is currently measuring, so right now we're at 4.01. We're going to hit enter. We end up with a result there. It doesn't really matter what it is. It should be fairly low right now. This one is uh, 0 0.12. But the next thing we're going to do is we're going to divide that by this voltage again here. So the voltage that the uh, Arduino is measuring, so 4.01. Hit enter. That'll give us another result. <clears throat> and the last thing we're going to do is multiply that by 50. And you'll see this is actually the number that's over here already. And the reason why it's 50 is because that's the maximum voltage that we can measure with our voltage dividers here. So our result is 1.496, so it's basically 1.5. I'm gonna put 1.5 in here. We'll get 1.50. And now if I upload that, that should get this first cell number up to the same as this meter, or at least very close to it. Now also I wanna mention cell number one is the cell that's between, well, it's the lowest voltage potential cell, so zero volts to four volts and ground to the first battery there. And as you can see, we are now at 4.13. Now what I'm gonna do is move the probes up. All right, so now hopefully you can see where I've got the probes here. Cell number two is the middle cell. And we're gonna pull up our calculator again. And this will be a very similar process, but it will have one difference. So I'm going to clear that. We're going to do a very similar thing. Right now we're 4.05 on the meter. 4.05 minus the 3.99 that we're measuring on the Arduino. Figure that out. Then we're going to divide that by 3.99 and we'll multiply it by 50. But the thing that we need to do here is actually take the cell number, in this case it's cell number 2, and we're gonna divide it by the cell number. So cell number two, we're gonna divide that by two, and that's the voltage that we need to use. So it's 0 0.38 roughly. So we're gonna put 0 0.38 in there, we're gonna upload that. Now this is important to upload it every time that you make a change because the individual cell voltages are actually based off of each other, uh, just in the math for the code. So you will have to do this every time. And there we go, we now have uh, 4.05 on the cell number two voltage, which matches our meter. And now we're gonna go ahead and move up our probes again. All right, so the cell number three voltage according to the meter is 
So we'll put that in. We're gonna subtract that by our measured voltage on the Arduino, which is about 3.9. It's kind of flicking between two numbers, but we're gonna go with 3.9. Hit enter. Then we're gonna divide that by the 3.9 that the Arduino is measuring. Multiply that number by our maximum voltage, which is 50 again. And then we're gonna take that and we're gonna divide it by the cell number. So in this case, we're on the third cell, which means that we're on cell number three, which is what this says. So we're gonna divide it by three and that's going to give us the number that we have to put into the code here, which is about uh, three or 0 0.85. And we will upload that, and that should give us the proper calibration on every cell. And there we have it, cell number three is 4.10 now, which is perfectly in line with this, and we should be able to probe the other cells and see that they're all equivalent. So 4.05 on cell number two, 4.05 on the meter. In cell number one, we have 4.13, and we have 4.13 on here. All right, eventually with the code, what I wanna do is have it so that you can essentially automatically calibrate this thing where maybe all you need is the difference in voltage between this meter and the Arduino instead of having to go through all that work in uh, the calculator and everything like that. Just make it one number, make it a little bit simpler at least. But uh, anyway, the next thing that I'm going to look at is the amperage number, which is currently sitting at 0 0.04, which I might not be able to get it any better than that, but we can certainly try. Now, unfortunately, I have not yet put the number for this at the top of the code, so I kind of just have to dig through it and find where it's at again here. So that would be this number here. Now, in an ideal world, it would be 512, and also you'd use 512 as a starting number. So we're gonna go ahead and set it as 512, and it'll probably throw it off worse because it was at 509. Give this a second. And right now, there is no current flowing in or out of the battery. Everything on that uh, side is completely disconnected here. So both the XT60s where the uh, current would flow through that board are completely disconnected. And you see right now we're sitting at negative 0.17 or so. If the number's negative, you wanna make this number lower. So we're just gonna go down in steps of probably two. So I'm gonna put 510 just to start with. And I would go in steps of two until you get close and then start going down in steps of one. Or if it's like way off, well, it shouldn't really be that much further off than this, but if it's way off, you might go in steps of five or something until you get close. And of course, it does take a second to uh, reboot every time here. So setting at 510, we have negative 0.03 or so. And I think if I take this down to 509, back where it was at, we're going to end up with a very similar number to what we had before. Now, honestly, I'm not sure why I have 0, .00 here. I don't think that these are actually float numbers. So it should just be 509 like that. But anyway, that's about as close as we're gonna get it, I think, so 0 0.05. Also, it's gonna, I guess you can take your pick if you want it to be negative or positive, but uh, it's gonna be a little bit off either way, at least in my case, it looks like. All right, so I already did try to test this thing once, but unfortunately my test got cut short uh, and I didn't want to uh, leave this unattended and hooked up. So I'm gonna try it again. I'm gonna go ahead and set our voltage up to about 13.2, I think, and we're gonna leave the uh, current limit at three amps. And I'm just gonna let this charge and we'll see what it does or how close it gets to uh, properly balance charging the cells. And we'll just have to see. Uh, what this thing does as it is and what kind of software tweaks I'm gonna have to make to turn this into a uh, really nice charger uh, It shouldn't be too bad though the way that it is right now our cell voltage is around 3.7 to 3.8 So we go ahead and enable that and let it charge and unfortunately these alligator clip wires are Really terrible, so they don't make a very good connection and the voltage drop across them goes way up I might actually get some different uh, 
alligator clips to do this with because these are not very good. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and set this to the side and let it charge. Alrighty, so it looks like we've gotten it all charged up here. We're sitting at about 4.2 volts per cell. Uh, occasionally all three of these uh, balance circuits are kicking on, so that would indicate that our battery is fully charged here. So anyhow, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the power supply and it should settle down to about 4.2 volts a cell or a little bit lower than that maybe. All right, so with the power taken off of it, you can see one cell is still kind of high. This one must have drifted up a bit more than the rest of them. So this is sitting at 4.21 and it's still trying to actively bring that cell back down. So once this thing is settled down, I'm gonna come back and we're gonna check the voltage of the individual cells again and we'll see if this is accurate or not. All right, so we'll see what we have here. First cell according to this is 4.18. Measure the voltage with the meter, we get 4.16, so that's pretty close. Second cell voltage says 4.15, this says 4.15, so that's a dead on. Last cell is 4.14 and the BMS is reading 4.15, so those are definitely pretty close. And it seems to have charged the battery pack up fairly evenly at least. We've got a decent balance charge there. Now I did give this quite a bit of time to charge because I was only pushing maybe an amp and a half into it throughout most of the charge. We're gonna have to make some uh, changes in order to get this thing to go up to a higher current, I think, including making this at least somewhat regulate the current with, uh, probably with pulse width modulation, do it kind of like a solar charge controller. All right, so anyway, our calibration seems to have worked out fairly well. We have a reasonably accurate voltage reading of all the cells. And I would call that a successful test here just to check the basic functionality of this. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, hit the like button. If you wanna see more videos on this project, hit the subscribe button. And if you wanna see smaller updates and things like that, you can follow me on Twitter and that link is in the description. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.